Good evening, everyone. Uh, does anyone who hasn't had uh, recording privileges want them? No? Okay. Jeremy, are you okay to, uh, to lead us off? Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Yeah, sure. Okay, that's great. Um, so it'll be Jeremy, then it'll be Stefan, and then um, if any of you have got any questions, you please send uh, something through on chat. So Jeremy, when, you, when, uh, when you're ready, thank you, mate. Yeah, sure. Hi, Owen. Hi, Jeremy. Um, you were 130 for one in the 13th. I mean, how disappointing to lose by 36 in the end. Yeah, I think sort of all on targets at that stage. I think probably one over behind a uh, big over, um, given that we're chasing quite a substantial score. So when you're ticking along at 10s, you always need a little bit more. So to kick on a little bit would have been nice. Um, and probably, you know, when you look back at the game, similar instance to the last game, um, our middle order probably haven't fired as well as we would have liked. What kind of lessons do you think England take out of this for the World Cup, Owen? Yeah, I think some big lessons. I think um, a huge amount of positives. I think certainly uh, four out of the five games, we've produced some of our best power play bowling uh, that we have in the last couple of years. And that's trying different things. You know, Adil Rashid has to be hugely commended for taking on a new role within the side, creating opportunity and obviously limiting the amount of runs that he was scored off as well it gives us an extra option moving forward so growing in, in that department because it's one of the hardest to bowl probably particularly in India um, and you know learnings from the back end of, of the games that we've lost are you know our middle order weren't as sharp as they normally are and one of our strengths is how quickly guys get in and adapt to surfaces didn't necessarily happen and I think in a similar instance in that period of the game with the bowlers as well. Do you think you need to get Ben Stokes more involved? He bowled three overs today and only faced 12 balls. Does he have to play a bigger part, do you think? Uh, Ben's role, I think one of the beauties about this series is actually having all our players available to select from. And when you do that, you know, we've played against teams for a long time and they might have the best playing 11 in the world on paper. But if they haven't played a lot together, they don't know the roles that they play. So the role Ben has played for us in the middle order, um, when he has had opportunities to play, he's done a really exceptional job. And it's actually an extremely difficult role to fulfill. And uh, it's a role that he's taken on board and embraced. And in the last game, um, played really, really well. And, you know, would have liked to kick on, but it didn't necessarily happen. But I think his contributions when he's given the opportunity have been really good. Uh, just finally from me, Owen, I mean, 400 runs today, but it was telling, wasn't it, that Bhuvaneshwar's 13th over seems to be decisive. I mean, 17 dot balls and two for 15 showing the value of bowling today like that. Absolutely. He's a, a fantastic bowler. Again, he's, he's had a limited opportunity in an Indian shirt. He's been hampered with injury over the years as well. So I've, I've played with Boovey um, at the IPL and know how effective he can be. Um, so certainly he's had a good day out today. Thank you. Stephen Shemmel, please. Owen, before this series, you talked about wanting your team to be challenged on that pitch this evening with the way India batted. And then later with the way Bhuvneshwar in particular bowled, is that about as tough as it gets in T20 cricket? Not really, no. I, you know, coming here wanting to be challenged for us means you know playing on turning pitches that are completely alien to us simply because we don't have opportunities to play them very often. So that was a challenge that I was sort of hinting at before the series. But the ball is barely turned. And given the pitches that we played on, probably bar two, um, they've been really good to play on and you know learning a lot about role clarity and actually being on top of your game in order to win a game yes that's all relative but actually we know that we can chase down 220 if, if we play really well we can because we've done it before in other instances and in similar surfaces that we've played on before so I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's as tough a challenge 
in terms of being prepared for the World Cup, then would you like would you have liked a bit more of that, more turning pitches in order to be ready for the range of scenarios you might face in seven months' time? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would have loved a couple of really low-scoring games. What do you need um, to see from your side over the course of the next seven months so you can be in a place to win the World Cup? And how can you draw on your experiences from, from 2019 in order to be in that position? Yeah, I think the experience of 2019 brings a huge amount of confidence to our changing room. I think it also expands our senior leaders within the group. It gives them more confidence to take on bigger roles. But also, I think taking advantage of the IPL, uh, up and coming IPL is going to be huge. You know, as a team and individuals, we don't want to stand still. We want to continue to move forward. Any opportunity guys get at the IPL, you want to try to make the most of it because we're going to be playing at home all summer and then we got a Bangladesh and Pakistan, I think. Um, but, you know, there's limited opportunity to get our best 11 in those games. So I think the experience over the next couple of months is probably the most valuable and then having the time to work on your game after that. It, it takes a lot to rattle Joss Butler. What was going on with him and Virat Kohli when Joss was dismissed? Yeah, I don't know, actually. Um, obviously, Virat's very animated uh, when he plays, big character in the game. That's just who he is. He rides the emotion of a game. So, you know, sometimes during tight games, people can have conflicts that's not uncommon. Um, and I think that was the instance. And just finally from me, is Joffre Archer fit to play in the one-day series? And, and do you still expect to come up against him during the IPL? Yeah, not quite sure yet. Um, you know, I think we're going to wait until tonight and tomorrow to see how Joffre has pulled up. Um, he's clearly had a, um, a progressive injury that has, ha he has become worse and does need attention. Um, so it'll be over to our medical team to make a decision and that hopefully you know, the decision that Joffre comes to will, will be the best for us um, in the long term. Thanks, Owen. Thanks. Thanks. Rory Dollar, please. Yeah, just, just to pick up on, on Joffre there, Owen, have you, have you had discussions with him during this series about how much pain he's, he's currently managing? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's rare when a bowler isn't managing pain. Well, it's what they do is a tough job. Um, if you ask any of them, are they ever pain-free? It's a pretty rare instance if they say yes. Um, so... You know, most of our bowlers are normally carrying niggles, but certainly the Joffre's situation is, has definitely got worse. Um, so, like I mentioned, it does need attention. And obviously it didn't impact the result in the end today, but Chris Jordan sort of made his latest entry for the highlights reel. Jason Roy was bursting out laughing as the ball was coming to him on the boundary rope. Is that the reaction you guys have now when, when CJ does this? Yeah, it's just remarkable. Um, some of his contributions in the field over the years, even when he's bowling, some of the cotton ball catches that he's had just are out of this world and, and stuff that, that we can't, you know, we cannot do. It's just pure natural ability. And he seems to do it time and time again. So it's a joy to watch. It adds a completely different dimension to T20 cricket um, for the fans. So it's, it's remarkable. Thanks. John Lethbridge, please. Uh, Owen, hi. There's been some discussion about um, David Bland's strike rate in the first four games. Uh, how do you think you went today? Really? Um, there's been no discussion about David Milan's strike rate in, in our changing room, and he's played really well today. OK. So do you see him uh, uh, pretty much nailed on as your World Cup number three? Nobody's nailed on, John. Um I've said this before about our team. If, for, if, if any player, including myself, like looks that far ahead and thinks, right, I'm, my position is nailed down, they're, they're mistaken because we want to both improve but continue to, continue to get better as the rest of the world progresses as, get, uh, as well. You know, T20 as a game progresses faster than any other of the formats. So we need to be 
you know, quite flexible in, in how we want to improve. We can't be rigid. Um, and we ultimately, we need to get better. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Cheers. Thanks, John. Four more now, please. Dean Wilson, Chris Stocks, Matt Roller, and Shashwat Kumar. Dean Wilson, please. Uh, yeah, hi, Owen. Um, sort of following on from that, um, there aren't that many international T20 matches left before the World Cup, but there's a heck of a lot of T20 tournaments and the 100 and, and so on and so forth. What's your message to players in those tournaments and, and, and what may or may not be up for grabs? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the message has always been the same. It was the same instance when the World Cup was supposed to be in Australia uh, last year. Um, in the lead-in, again, we had very few T20 opportunities. There was a PSL, the IPL, supposed to be all scheduled in, in, within the fixture list for white ball players. And the, the message is always to go to the tournaments and try and be the best player at the tournament. Because if that's always your goal, if you fall short, normally you're continually improving and exposing yourself in conditions that aren't necessarily you know, easy to bat or bowl on. So that, that's simply the message, yeah. And, and do you feel as though that you've come away from this series knowing more than you did before it? Yeah, I, I certainly think with the power play, absolutely. Um, you know, our top order has been strong for some time now. Our bowling in the power play probably hasn't been as strong as we'd have liked it. Um, but certainly Adil has added a, a different dimension to that. I think Mark Wood is bowled, bowled, you know, with a huge amount of pace, but also accuracy as well. So that, that adds another string to our bow. Um, and obviously areas of improvement are, you know, the death with the ball and with, with the bat. You know, they're, they're big areas of the game that can win and lose you a game. So we need to be sharper when it comes to them. And just finally for me, watching the way that someone like Ishan Kishan and, and um, Surya Kumar Yadav have taken to international cricket here, does that kind of leave you sort of wondering whether you might pick up somebody between now and, and October? Um, to be honest, Dean, like we, we continue, like because there is opportunity to look at other players outside of our strongest 11 at the moment, there is always opportunity. We, we, we looked at it uh, last summer with guys like Tom Banton, Sam Billings, who's here, Mo and Ali taking on you know, great responsibility when he's had the opportunity. Um, we've had Phil Salt in. We've, we've had a number of players that have come in and, and definitely impressed. So the, the talent is there and there will be more opportunity throughout our summer to see players that have real international ability. Um, so hopefully they can match, uh, match the, the ability with the opportunity as well. Matt Roller, please. Um, hi, Owen. You've mentioned a few times sort of not expecting to have your full-strength team available this summer in the T20s. Uh, could you give us an indication sort of how many players you're actually expecting to be without? Is that all of the multi-format guys or just the bowlers? Or uh, I'd imagine all of the multi-format guys. It's just too much to ask. Um, and given the winter guys I've had as well, uh, around being in a bubble, a lot of it will be dependent on how flexible it is to come in and out of a bio-secure environment that we have during our summer, um, whether they can see their families or not. Um, and also, we've been lucky with injuries so far, but you know we can't always have our fast bowlers as fit as we would like them. So for, for people who were sort of on the sidelines, the series like Moeen and Sam, are you um, expecting them to have still a realistic chance of making the side for the first game of the World Cup? Um, no, when did I ever mention that? Did I mention that? Well, I asked whether you were expecting them to have a realistic chance. No, I think we're too far out. The, 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 we're too far out for the world, world, from the World Cup to see you know who could be in and out of the squad. What we will have is throughout the summer opportunities for those guys to, you know, stake their claim. Um, I think that's one of the sort of really good sides of, of not having your best players available the whole time. You, you tend to grow as a squad and, and, you know, we're lucky. We do have a lot of talented guys who, who 
don't have opportunity that often that have been in and around sides. So there will be opportunity for those guys to stake their claim. Cheers. Thanks. Matt. Finally, Sheshwat Kumar, please. Hello, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good evening, Oil. So I had a couple of questions. So firstly, Sam Curran came out to bat at number nine today. So was that a bit of an injury concern or was that a tactical move? Tactical move, no injury concern. Okay, so moving on to further from that question, you have three left-handers stacked together, like uh, you, Stokes and Sam. So is that bit of rotation something that we can expect to see in the next T20 series that you play? Um, given, yeah, well, Ben won't be there. Um, so given there's probably a right-hander going to come in, if it is a left-hander, you know what, we've, the, the left-handers that we have play like, different styles of games. Normally, if they reverse sweep or hit it over extra cover and slug sweep, there isn't a tendency to be concerned unless the wicket is turning or gripping a lot. And given our first game is in June, I can't imagine the, the, the wicket turning or gripping a lot. So left hand, right hand is a massive concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers, guys. Thank Take you very care. much. Bye-bye. Thank you.